Dude, I swear to God. I fucking... If they made me wake up an hour early, I will literally end my stream right now if it's not coming out. I swear to God, dude. If I'm getting fucking jaborded right now, I will literally just end my stream and just go live again in an hour. Fuck, it's real. God, I really wanted to take a nap. My supported ally grows up to 4-4 four, four this round. So basically it's like a suit up where it goes up to 4-4. Four, four. That face, that picture. I was okay, I wasn't going to say. I wasn't going to say cuz I don't play League, but I looked at that face and I was like, this looks off. Like what happened here? <laughs> I wasn't going to say anything though. Okay. <laughs> Yes, it feels like something- it feels like something happened there. Um, alright. And it levels up if our allies have been supported three plus times. So she- she also has to be on board for that. And that opponent card is one we haven't seen yet, right? Whimsy! Transform a follower into a 101 squirrel and silence it this round. So you guys completely predicted this. You guys are 100% on the nose. This is literally exactly, exactly what you guys expected. So, basically, you want to kill the, uh, you basically use it like, when your opponent attacks or when your opponent blocks, it's often going to be a combat trick. But you can also use it when the opponent targets it with like, single combat or atrocity this is burst at four mana this looks ridiculous what i mean it only works on followers but Round start creating a fleeting help picks in hand, and the supported ally goes up to a 5 5 instead of a 4 4. <clears throat> Sorry, that little, that little thing she did was kind of cute. Give an ally barrier or an enemy vulnerable that. Ooh. You know what? I will say they kind of nailed the flavor on this pretty well. Like, this this is exactly what Help Picks did in, in, in League of Legends, because I read that five minutes ago. Give an ally barrier or an enemy vulnerable this round. That's kind of cool. It's, uh, you know, so it's another burst that you can't be cast in combat or as a response to a spell. So it's just like something you use on your open attack, basically. We're going to have to, like, go back and sort of evaluate Lulu as, a, as an idea. So, I'll mention a couple of things. This card, this one here, we haven't seen this, have we? It's like an elephant. Am I missing something? Huh. That's interesting. Oh, look at Twitter. Oh, yeah, yeah. It'll, it'll be on the new card set reveal. It was funny uh, the, the other day when we, when we made jokes about, like, going inside Tarek. Um... That's like, it's all in good fun. Everyone can like spam gacha emotes. I really shouldn't make jokes about going inside Lulu. That's like, just something I'm gonna have to avoid. It's gonna be a little bit difficult, but I think I can get there. Okay, <clears throat> so, let's check this out. We've got, you know, these four cards we've seen already. We've got the 1-1 Squirrel that has no tag. We've got Pix, which is just a vanilla unit you can just put anywhere. And it's support, give an ally, plus two plus one this round right so that's pretty interesting that's pretty interesting that we can just like it's a one mana it doesn't attack on turn one but it gives stats to something else that seems like really hard for that to be competitive like because it's always just gonna get blocked for free or killed out by like a one mana thing it's so vulnerable it's so insanely vulnerable this card picks and it can't really block on defense but there might be like some crazy way to use this that 
Like, I mean, plus two, plus one is pretty strong, especially like when you combine it with something like an elusive. Then we get to Fey Guide, which is play Grant and Ally Elusive. Now you guys know I'm Mr. Elusives. I love Elusives because I'm a degenerate and I have the, you know, I have the ability to admit that to myself. So Grant and Ally Elusive is, I think, not as big of a deal as, as it probably seems at first. I think the Elusive keyword is strong and I think that, I mean, anything that can push Elusives to a higher level is pretty good, but usually you don't really want to be like granting an Ally Elusive for a 4 mana 3-3. I think this is quite overrated. Like, it's actually hard for... It's hard imagining this finding, like, a really, really good use. It's Ionia Grant. I mean, you can use it on Zed on turn 4, but then you're just, like, really overcommitting to removal. I would, like, the reason that Elusives is so strong is because you don't pay very much for the Elusive keyword. But in this case, you're, you're doing, like, a 4 mana 3-3 three, three just to give something Elusive, which is usually not gonna be worth it. Like, I'm, I'm having a hard time imagining a situation where this is worth it. If you want to do something degenerate with, like, giving Elusive to something that shouldn't have it, like, for example, uh, a scout, like, Elusive Moose, you're better off using Ghost, honestly, than something like Fey Guide, for sure. Like, you don't really want to be trying to, like, double down on, like, effective Elusive concepts long term. It's a worse Sumpworks map. Exactly! Some people are saying it's a better Sumpworks map, but it's definitely worse. You don't... The, the the idea of, like, the 3-3 body isn't really worth very much. And the fact that it costs 4 mana is kind of awkward. The best way to curve this is after Zed. It's like Zed on 3, and then Fey Guide on 4. But the Zed Ghost doesn't get elusive right away. Only until after he levels. And it just makes the Zed, like, a huge commitment. Because at that point, if they kill the Zed, then you can lose the game. So, I, I really do think that this is... Like, I... I love elusives and I think that they're really strong and I think elusives as a concept will always be really strong. And you'll remember yesterday I was saying specifically like the um the little mini elusive uh what what was it young witch I think young witch was was the elusive that they showed yesterday this one. I was saying that this one would kind of have to be competitive just cuz anything with the elusive keyword is going to be decent. Like two mana for two elusive stats is fine. Here's the problem though. I, I think that Young Witch is more competitive than Fey Guide, and I know that's going to sound really, really weird to you guys. I know to you guys, like, Fey Guide probably looks really, really good, and Young Witch probably looks really, really bad. But the thing that's really important is, like, the mana cost of Young Witch is really important, like, being able to get it down early. But also, like, Fey Guide just has really, really clunky timing, and the whole point of the elusive keyword being strong is that it's so non-committal and cheap, right? You don't want to be paying mana and stats like for something that can give the elusive keyword to something else anything that you want the elusive keyword to be used on is going to be a pretty expensive minion like four mana five mana six mana minion like Scythria, like something that you're gonna pl uh something that you'll only want on a later turn like lucian or senna uh that is only worth putting elusive on after it levels up you're, you just always want ghost ghost is always better than this Okay, then we've got Startled Stomper. Startled Stomper is a 2 mana 2-3 two, Overwhelm. That's interesting. And this is, by the way, I should point out, this is a Targon card. The rest of the cards on this page are Ionia cards, but for some reason, they're showing Startled Stomper, which is a Targon card. Um, I mean, we don't know of any, like, Overwhelm synergy in Targon. It seems like... I mean, I, I can't outright call it bad, I think. I think Overwhelm is an underrated keyword. I think it works well with some buffs, and Tar Targon does have a lot of buffs. They've got some supports and stuff like that. <clears throat> and it's got a good stat line for buffs as well. The thing about buffs that's really important to keep in mind is, like, when you have a target that has low attack and high health, that's premium for buffing, right? You, you want to buff, so when, when you have a symmetrical buff, when you have a buff that's like plus one, plus one, or plus two, plus two, or like any standard buff, you want to use it on something with lower attack than health. And the reason being, health scales better than attack, right? Like, you'd rather, if you were to buff it plus three, plus three, you'd end up with a 5-6 a instead of a 6-5. And a 5-6 is a lot better than a 6-5. Like, you remember when Hackerim had six health and then it got nerfed to five? And it got nerfed in other ways, but that extra point of health matters a lot. 
And the extra point of attack doesn't matter too much. So, I mean, we can certainly imagine this getting buffed for value. Because, of course, Overwhelm is also a keyword that is good with buffs. So we have to look at this stat line and this Overwhelm as something that's like, ooh, this is a really good buff target. It's a premium vanilla buff target. Hmm. Interesting. Kuvira is saying it's good with Freljord. I mean, it's disgusting to draw this off of Omenhawk turn 2, but it's just... I feel like it's gonna be a worse Ruthless Raider. I can imagine some metas where it might be a little bit better. I don't know. This one is hard to evaluate. I can say offhand, Startled Stomper has higher odds than some of these other cards. Like, Fey Guide and Picks, I feel like are gonna have really hard times being competitive, whereas Startled Stomper actually looks decent. And I think that's important to understand. I think that a lot of times when people do card evaluations, they beeline towards unique effects as opposed to like solid value. And in reality, like Pix and Fey Guide have unique effects, but the average value on them is gonna be pretty low. Whereas Turtled Stomper has a higher chance than both of them to be competitive. But I'm still not sure exactly where I'd rank it. Whimsy isn't main deckable. No, it's just, uh, so I, I want to clarify something really important to you guys. Whimsy is main deckable. It's just because it's the champion version that it doesn't have the gem. Whimsy is a main deckable card, okay? Um, yeah. So, this is quite interesting. Let's go ahead and evaluate these cards. I'm confused by this rating system. Please use emotes. <laughs> All right, all right, I'll, I'll use emotes, I'll use emotes. Let me, uh, here, one second, we'll, we'll rate these cards. I think Whimsy is really strong. I think Startled Thumper has potential. These two units seem a little bit baity, and Lulu is a big question mark for me right now. So give me, give me one minute, I'm gonna evaluate all these cards, and then we're gonna get people on call, talk about, like, all the different ways we can use this, because Lulu is really, really interesting, and there's gotta be a lot of ways we can combine her. Whimsy, I'm just gonna start, I'm gonna start off strong with Whimsy. Whimsy is most comparable to Will of Ionia. It transforms a follower into a 1-1 squirrel and silences it this round. What are the applications? And at 4 mana, at fast burst speed, it's burst instead of fast, but it's, it's reactive speed, it's very comparable to old Will of Ionia. I can guarantee you guys, at 4 mana, this is better than new Will of Ionia. However, is it better than old Will of Ionia at 4 mana? And the answer to that is probably no. The fact that it can't be used on champions does actually matter. And the fact that you do have to have a way to kill the unit also matters quite a bit, right? Also matters quite a bit. For example, this is really, really important. If my opponent plays a Leviathan, I can will it and the opponent's screwed, right? They basically can't win the game anymore. If my opponent plays a Leviathan and I play Lulu's Whimsy. If the opponent's smart and they're playing against a deck that could have Lulu's Whimsy, they're never going to attack with their Leviathan, which means I will need a follow-up spell to be able to kill it, right? I will need a follow-up spell to be able to kill it, because if I can't kill the 1-1, then it's basically just going to be just doing nothing, actually. Like, literally nothing. Like, it, like it won't do anything, because... The silence will end at the end of the round, and then Leviathan will just start next round, like normal, right? So, that's a little awkward. You can't use it on champions, which is a really big deal. A really, really, really big deal. So this is quite a bit worse than old Will of Ionia. Now, it's burst instead of fast, and that's adorable, but that matters a lot less than it probably seems. It matters less than it seems. It does matter, but it does matter less than it seems. And yes, stuff like, even Fiora sometimes, people forget, like, even Fiora as a valuable will target. Like, will is something that actually does prevent the Fiora win condition from happening, and Whimsy is not. This is quite a bit worse than old will, but for the one mana discount, this might be better than new will at five mana. It's gonna be, I think, kind of like on the level of new will at five mana. Because that's the question. That's the question, guys. Which is, would you run this or will? And the answer... You should compare it to Fury and not Will. I think that, I mean, it, it is very fair that, like, it's much more of, like, a combat trickable card. The question, though, is, like, is it better to, like, kill the Cythria during the attack? There's a lot of champions you can't use it on. I think what I would say here, 
purifies a better comparison. It is, it is a flawed comparison calling comparing it to Will. It's, it's not a perfect model. You guys are right about that. What I would say here is that what this card represents is like an alternate choice, which I really like. I will say that this card existing... Some metas, you will run this card over the will slot, and some metas, you will you will run will over this card slot. I think that it's pretty rare you would run both. I think that if there's like a champion you need to deal with, then you'll run will over whimsy. It's also really important to note, really, really important to note, can't be denied. Guys, deny is like not really a competitive card. It's like, the difference between burst and fast speed will pretty rarely actually matter. Like... It can matter sometimes. The bigger thing, like, w when you go in for a will, the bigger thing is, like, the opponent might have atrocity or single combat or something like that. Like, when they play big and dur, and they attack and force you to pre-will, and then they atrocity, you lose. Whereas, if it was whimsy, you'd win. That's, like, that's much more the kind of situation where it matters, right? It also works against Fizz. It also does work against Fizz, which is actually gigantic. Holy shit. Okay, that's really big. That's really big that it works against Fizz. It also works against Bastion as well, which is kind of funny. Because people will be running Bastion. Fizz is a champ? Okay, you guys are right. It really is not big. It doesn't work against Fizz. Dude, I got so fucking debated. This, I thought this guy was making sense. Okay. Fuck, it's the Purified Champs meme all over again. God damn it. How did, how did this happen? How did this happen? We're back full circle. It's fucking five months ago and we're doing Purified Champs memes. <laughs> Fuck, dude! <laughs> Jesus Christ! He got me! <laughs> this is the new meme, it's just- Just- Just whimsy the Trindamir, Pega! Just whimsy it, you stupid streamer! <laughs> Fuck, man! <laughs> this is a competitive card. Whimsy is nuts. I'm immediately- I immediately have to rate Whimsy at least a swoon. I think this card could be a Lux. I think this card could be a Lux. Put your votes in now. We're not going to do a poll, but I want to see you guys in chat. Do you think this is a swoon or do you think this is a Lux? Because this card is good. This card is at least a swoon. You're smoking? Ooh, Marcus thinks I'm smoking. Marcus, you think this is a Vlad? I think this is a swoon. Kuvira thinks it's a Vlad too. Wow, am I smoking? This card is pretty good. I think people are overrating this card. I would very happily call this card a spoon. I think it is very solid. I don't think it's insane or meta-defining, but I think it's very solid. I think it might be... I, I would say it's closer to a Lux than a Vlad, absolutely. Absolutely, I would say that. Like, this card is a very, very good card, in my opinion. So I will happily rate Lulu's Whimsy as a swoon, which, for those of you guys who, you know, aren't aren't familiar with my emote rating system swoon means it's a very good card honestly ratings are kind of a meme because like i mean you hear my words before i give the rating so you know what the rating you, you already have it defined in your head because i'm talking about it and i'm i'm saying the words i think it's very good it's quite good but it's not like the best thing ever you guys know what the rating means it's context right great good glad we've got that worked out okay <clears throat> so picks Pix looks like a Pix looks like a Heimerdinger to me. I I just don't see Pix. Pix is really hard to get off. It's like one mana zero one is vulnerable to so many things. It can't block for value because it doesn't have attack. And if it attacks, it needs the opponent to not be able to block it. So you need to be able to combine it with like a challenger, right? It's kind of like a War Chefs, except it can always get blocked. It can always get killed by something. And I mean it just dies right away, right? This is is more of a sad Poro? I think it might be more of a sad Poro. I just like... I don't... I don't know how I could use this card. It's a support proc. Compare picks with Blade Scout. Exactly. That's exactly right, Order of Azeroth. Compare picks with Blade Scout. And it just feels like it's really lacking in that department. There might be some genius way to use this that I'm not seeing. God, this is a really bad War Chefs. This is a really, really bad War Chefs. Jesus Christ, this is terrible. This is, this is a sad Poro. This is horrible. This card is absolutely terrible. This card's a Darius. I'm, I'm just straight up giving this a Darius. I will say, I will say, there's a, there, like, so the support keyword, you want to play a one drop on one, and then you want to play a support on two to support it, right? You want to play War Chefs, or even, like, Trifarian Drummer you can play, or even, uh, um... What, Tiari the Traveler is fine, you know? You, 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 on turn two, you have the support, right? That's fine, right? And 
you know, Pix is cute with Lulu. It's like, yes, I make my dude a 4-4, and then suddenly it can attack. But I don't think that can really be enough. You, you, you are going to have things that you would rather buff up. Like, the fact that it gives plus 2, plus 1 can't be worth it. I will say, the, the, the Lulu synergy does make it better than a Darius. I can't give it a Darius. I should probably give it a Hymer. I should give it a Hymer. It's not a Darius. It's not bad enough to be a Darius. You can only imagine running it with something like Lulu or maybe Suit Up. I could see that. But the thing to understand is like, here's something really, really, really important, which is that even in the support deck, you are going to have to have one or two like non-support cards, right? That's really, really important. Like, you can imagine playing picks into Lulu, and then your Lulu will make your picks a 4-4, and then your picks will make something else big. But your something else on turn 2 is probably just going to be another support. If you have three units on turn 3, and if all of them are support, there's going to be one unit that doesn't get their support off, right? You need, in a support deck, you need to have one or two early cards, reliably, that aren't support cards. Because if your entire board is support, you're going to miss getting a support off. And that's just a waste of value, right? It's a big waste of value. And that's a really, really big problem, right? So there's there's a lot of like awkwardnesses with picks. I will say, that's why there's Startled Stomper. Wait, which one is Startled Stomper? Oh, that's the that's the Pachyderm. Um, I mean it's adorable. That's that's cute. It's no. No. Right? No. No. Right? No. No, 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 no. I will say, one... We'll get to Lulu later. We'll, we'll get to Lulu later. But I, I do have a couple things to say about Lulu. Okay. So, yeah. Overall picks. It's not going to be... It's not going to be super great. I'll call it a Heimerdinger emote. Heimerdinger means... I can't outright call it bad. It means, like, there's a chance you could... Ex Heimerdinger just means experimental, right? It's like... It's probably bad, but man, it actually does have some unique applications. So I could see it being experimented on. I, I really could. Like maybe there is some curve play that makes it worth it. I, I feel like it will almost certainly be bad, but it could maybe surprise us a little bit, right? It's kind of like Shadow Fiend. Like Shadow Fiend is like the perfect time reading your emote because like it looks really bad, but. I mean, Order of Azeroth in chat, for example, was, like, messing around with, like, Shadow Fiend Callista concepts, and it actually kind of impressed me a little bit. I mean, I don't think it's competitive, but it has a chance of, like, making some sense, you know? That, that's what I mean with, with, with picks. So it's, it's a pure Heimerdinger emote. Fey Guide looks... I, I would have to call it a Heimerdinger emote as well. I mean, uh, God, do I? Would, would you ever run this card? Isn't this card literally always worse than Ghost? I think this card is literally 100% of the time worse than Ghost. I can't imagine... I can't imagine a universe where this is better than Ghost. Like, literally, it's unimaginable. <clears throat> I think I, I I would just call Faye a sad Poro. Ghost is just better. Yeah. Th this card is just bad. I think it's it's really, 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 really important to not overrate this... Uh, the, the Grant keyword, we really, really can't be overrating. Because... You are often paying, like, out the ass just for the ability to have a grant. And the timing... I, I, I want to be very, very clear. The way, like, Terra timing and development works, <clears throat> a 4-mana 3-3 three, three is a really, 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 really weak stat line. A 4-mana 3-3... Three, three, like, the idea of playing a 3-3 three, three on turn 4, or for, like, most of a play on, on, like, a later turn, is really, really, really clunky and awkward. It's like just past the it's hard to explain it's just past the point where like the 3-3 stat line will matter like the opponent will almost always be able to very easily deal with a 3-3 on turn four and when the game is ramping up at like key turns of the game on turn like six or turn seven you can't like double play four mana cards right it's like the the very specific timing of how rune terra games play out and this is pretty meta independent by the way i, I will say it it can be a bit better in certain metas but in even different types of metas, the idea of a 3-3 on turn 4 is pretty weak. Now, people are saying, like, babbling Bjerg, and yeah, Bjerg has had the ability to hit before, for sure. It's like, Bjerg's alright, he has a pretty strong thing, he draws you a card, and he draws you, like, a card that skews late game. Fake Guide doesn't really do enough. Um, you really don't want to pay extra. You're, you're paying so much extra compared to something like Ghost, just for a permanent elusive. And the thing to understand is that anything that you would want to Ghost... 
anything that you would want to give Ghost to would be something that is so powerful that you can end the game that turn, right? Like, it's really, really important. Giving elusive... So, the reason the elusive keyword is good is because it's so cheap. The units that have elusive on them are all just good units. You can play Solitary Monk on turn 3. It has a very low cost for the ability to play, even, even post-nerf, a 3-mana three 3-3 three, three elusive, right? You're paying one more mana on Fae Guide just to put the elusive on a different body than your 3-3, three three, which can only be useful if you're targeting a very specific body. There's nothing you can play on turn 3 that really wants the elusive, right? Like, pr like we, we can imagine Mentor staying alive is cute, but if it dies, you get the crystals anyway, so it's not really worth it, right? If you give Zed Elusive on turn 4, there's it's still going to get the other one chump blocked. Giving Zed Elusive is actually like a horrible meme. It seems kind of adorable until you realize that it still needs to attack like 3 times to get a flip attack in because they can still block the clone. And the whole point of Zed is every every smart opponent against Zed will always just block one of the units anyway. So it, it's not changing anything. When you attack with Zed on turn 4, they will block one unit and let the other through. That's that's what they do against Zed anyway. That doesn't, it doesn't change anything, right? Can it grant it to itself? I'm actually not sure. I'm pretty sure it can't do it on itself, I think. Um, but that actually would change the evaluation of this card. If, if it could grant on itself, it, it would be better, for sure. Um, I don't, I, I, I don't think, we've seen this effect before and it, it shouldn't be able to, right? Can we have developer confirmation? Can this give elusive to itself? We've seen this this text before has not been able to use on itself. Like Laurent Duelist, exactly. Like Laurent Duelist where it can't use on itself. It should not be able to use this on itself. So yeah, I would say I don't I don't like giving this a potential emote. I don't like giving this a Heimerdinger for the simple reason that Ghost already exists in this region. And that's super important, the fact that it's in this region. If it was in a different region, if this was a unique way in this region to give the elusive keyword, even if it's bad, if it's in a unique way to do it, I have to give it a Heimerdinger at least. But because this is a worse Ghost, because this is a worse Sumpworks map, I have to give this a a sad Poro. I have to give this a sad Poro. Unfortunately, Fae Guide just doesn't really make sense. If you're doing, like, I will say, I think Ghost is underrated. I think that there will be some degenerate combo decks that try to slip that effect in more, and I think that's great, but Fae Guide is just, n it's just an expensive way to do it. The 3-3 body is really doing almost nothing for you at that turn in the game. So, we'll have to see. I know some, some of you guys are saying this is a hot take. I will say, Elusives is is something that I feel personally quite comfortable on. Like I'm I'm playing it out in my head a lot. We're gonna get some other people on call here, and there will be some people that rate Fae Guide higher than I do. So we'll have those discussions there. I might be I might change my score on it. I might change my score on it. But I'll give it a sad pour for now. Startled Stomper. This one's this one's interesting. My initial impression is Vlad for the Startled Stomper. You know, it's like it seems like a solid card that has the ability to exist on the competitive level. It feels like it's not gonna be an amazing time getting there. It feels just like it's an alright card that you can just like run. A 2 mana 2 3 is a really, really important stat line. Because against like a lot of these control decks, like PNZ, like the, the, having 3 health is insanely important. It's so ridiculous to, to explain how big of a deal the difference between like 3 health on turn 2 is. It means you can always attack and your opponent never gets a trade up no matter what on turn 2. And it means that the opponent can't trade equivalently with cards like Mystic Shot and Thermo Beam, which is ridiculous it is so ridiculous how important that is right like if it was like you know a two uh, a three two that would be a lot weaker now that's something that we see in um raider ruthless raider but raider has tough so it's kind of like a little bit better than a, than a two health unit um which is kind of cute swoon wow wow you guys are thinking this might be a swoon i don't and, and, and i'll point out again stomper is targon not ionia uh, just to be clear, because everything else on this page is Ionia, so it's very important to keep that in mind. I think this is a very solid Vlad. It's a card that I'm happy saying it exists on the competitive level. Vlad is basically what I would say, like, this is sort of the bottom of the competitive level. This is a card that is something that is a con competitive consideration. It could be a bit of a meta call if you need a 2-drop in a specific deck. It is pretty specific to, like, what you might, like, what what you might want um you could see it finding a home you know people will mess around with it and 
it's not going to be amazing. It's not going to be super common competitively unless it surprises us, but it's something that we'll consider and maybe run. I will say, this is another one that I might be underrating. I might be underrating this. There will be, I think some people in the call that we start pretty soon are actually going to rate this higher than I do. And there are big arguments for that. So that'll be exciting. And then we've got Lulu. Because we've done everything else so far. We've done Lulu's Whimsy. We've done Fae Guide Stomper picks. And now finally, the champion herself, Lulu. Wow, how to evaluate this card. So I will say something that's really, really big here. Something that's really, really big here is... Support is sort of a really clunky archetype for one specific reason. There, there's one specific reason that support is kind of awkward. Um, The support keyword requires you to attack to gain value with units on board. Now, these two things combined are kind of weird together. How are they weird? Well, a card that forces you to attack to gain its value is something that means you're often going to want to be floating mana for a trick because that allows you to reliably attack without the opponent being able to, you know, with the opponent having less odds of blocking, right? It's like the more amount of times, the more amount of opening lines that you can attack floating mana, the more likely that you'll be able to get like the value in per game, right? But the problem is the support keyword, the other way the support keyword works is you need to have units on board. So like, for example, you guys were saying, well, Swim, imagine like picks into Startled Thumper into Lulu on turn three, and I'm imagining that, and then the problem is, what if they just play like Avros and Trapper, and then you lose, right? Like they just have to play a three mana three three, and then you're kind of screwed. Like they have a really, really good block for you there, right? So just think about it within that context. Whereas like, that is something that's a little clunky with the support keyword. That it is both incentivizing you to develop tempo, but also like on some level you do maybe want to be banking spell mana, right? So that is pretty important. Now you guys are saying she doesn't need to see. Our allies have been supported three times. She, she, so it's it's not an I've seen, right? I think I, I think I said that wrong the first time. She, she does level up in hand and in deck, right? I believe. I'm, I'm still trying to figure out Riot wording, but that, that seems right. She does level up in hand and in deck, which is pretty big, right? She can level pretty aggressively. She can level pretty aggressively. Turn one picks into Caustic Cask. That is pretty funny. <laughs> picks into Cask into Butcher? Wait, no, that's three different regions. <laughs> okay, never mind. Okay. Same wording as Swain, she levels in deck. All right, so it's confir confirmed Lulu levels in deck. I misspoke earlier. That was my bad. That was my bad. I, I misspoke earlier. She levels in deck. So, you can play her in a couple different ways. I mean, she's kind of, in a way, she's sort of like a tempo card, right? She's very, very tempo oriented. She's very, very, very tempo oriented, where she just kind of wants to, like, bash down and early. She doesn't want to go late at all. She levels quick. She levels quick, you know? Our allies have been supported three times, so when is she going to level? You're probably not going to want to play her on three, except in ideal cases. So it's like, you play a one drop on turn one. Let's say you're playing a Fleet Feather Tracker on turn one. And then on turn two, you play, you know, whatever whatever support you've got. Maybe War Chefs. It could be whatever. You trigger one support. And you attack. And then on turn four, you trigger a couple more supports and you attack. And then Lulu's leveled on turn five when you play her. Which is really not bad. She levels fast. I suspect that she's a good option. You will often not want to play her on turn three proactively, but there's certain board states where your opponent might be playing a deck that can't really deal with her. Like for example, they're playing Shadow Isles and they're skipping a lot of turns and they're not developing like three, three blockers. So what you could do is you could just play Lulu on turn three in a matchup like that and swing for damage. But in a lot of matchups, you'll have a better 3-drop and you'll wait until she's leveled to be able to play her to be able to attack with her, right? Once she's leveled, then you get the fleeting help picks in hand, which is, it's, it's, it's sort of a, a, a pseudo burst because you can only use it at slow speed, but it doesn't take the action, which is give an ally barrier or an enemy vulnerable this round. Can't be cast in combat or response to a spell. So that's pretty sweet, just getting like the free barrier for one mana. And it's also a self-target. If you use it for the barrier. And the self-target does work with both Taric and Arbiter of the Peak for their level up conditions, right? That's what like the self-target is for there. Okay. 
You can get you get help picks every single round. Man, Lulu's a hard card to evaluate, guys. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? I actually I'm I'm curious on your guys' input in this one. Like she seems potential. She seems better than Tarek. She does seem better than Tarek. Like, quite a bit. She's a lot easier to level. And she's higher value. You guys are saying Swoon. So I ended up lowering Tarek. At, at a certain point, I had Tarek at a Swoon. I ended up lowering him to a Vlad. Because he felt, like, you know, viable, but a little bit clunky. I I think I could call her a Swoon. I think, you know, we'll, we'll evaluate her later. I'll have to get into... When, when I do, like, that sort of, like, podcast with, you know, different guys... And get people on. I will I will talk about different ways to use her and we'll get more in depth. But for now, I'm really liking her potential. I'm gonna go ahead and give her a swoon for now. It could come a little bit down later. I she she can't really be a lux, she's not gonna be that insane. Um, but I'm very happy calling her a swoon. So that's my final scoring for today's reveals. For well, I, I say final scoring, but keep in mind, I will I'll do the podcast, I'll talk for like two hours with a bunch of other guys, and then after the end of that, I will change some of my ratings, at least a little bit, we'll see. Maybe a lot, who knows, depending on kind of like what people say and what you guys in chat say. And then I'll always be, and I'll do this every day, I'll update my YouTube pinned comment with my updated rating, and I'll like tweet out my updated rating at the end of the day. And this is what we're gonna do every single day for these reveals. We're gonna do like this initial impressions with my ratings, pretty long form, because I do want to be thorough about these impressions. And then I'm going to kind of go back and edit, like, the pinned comment and the tweet given, like, my final ratings at the end of everything else. Okay? So, that is where we stand here. I'm pretty excited for this. I think these are actually some pretty powerful cards overall, particularly, like, Whimsy and Lulu. I don't see a ton of potential in some of these units, but, like, Whimsy and Lulu could actually have the chance to be, like, actually kind of insane. And these two cards, as some of you guys pointed out, Fae Guide and Started Thumper, I might be underrating. I might be underrating.